but many of us haven't used the web. It's, it's a strange place, strange environment. We're not used to it. We'd much rather have a, a newspaper listen to the radio. It's a lot easier that way. Uh, and the other area is, uh, is, is about clients. Um, that language, technology are all fine, but do my clients use the web? And that's, that's really important because I don't think many of us are actually convinced by that. So if only it were that easy. Well, it is, because in my mind, you just have to bear one thing in mind, and it's the following. That the web, and we've touched on this as well, the web is a means of engagement. It is not a push medium. It can be used as such, but not to its best effect. The big advantage of the web is that ability to engage, and I repeat it again, engage, 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 and dare I say it, engage on an emotional level with your user. Now, don't get me wrong, all good advertising campaigns include an element of engagement, but what engagement does online is it takes it to the next level. It's about creating discourse, a conversation, this read-write relationship with the user. So we could have pay-per-click on Google. We could have banner adverts. We can have a couple of e-shots thrown in there and all on the back of a fantastic radio advert. But that's just not enough. It doesn't cut the mustard and you can put that mustard in a lovely little French bowl with a bow on top. It just doesn't cut it. And that's what we were talking about. It's about that, that integrating, that uh, creating a synergy throughout the whole of your campaign. Now, the basic criteria of a, of, a, of a digital campaign, in my mind, are the following. As I say, synergy. So what you're doing online matches what you're doing offline. Only then can the two have any power. It's about integrating, having synergy along uh, both lines. It's about collecting online data, great, through analytics and the, and the rest, but it's also collecting your offline data, using the two together, and then having the ability with all of that data to be able to group your client base, to understand what types of user you have, what type of clients you have. And then taking that next step, using that data and putting it into an eCRM or an e-customer relationship management system. And I don't mean by system spending £10,000 on some piece of software. What I mean is having the knowledge and the understanding that actually the relationship has changed online. No longer online are you able to communicate over a desk in an office. You're not able to communicate over a counter in a shop. This is online and it's a matter of remembering that you're still dealing with individuals, with people, with your clients. And then being able to link campaign specifics to a conversion rate or return on investment as we hear again. And that is, for example, I'll use an example, Google pay-per-click. It is pay-per-click. You're paying for somebody to go through to your website, to see your advert, to get those pair of eyes onto, onto what you're offering, as opposed, to, uh, as opposed to some other way. And with the pay-per-click and those keywords and key phrases that you've identified, linking it right through the sales journey, if you like, to the very end when they've, the, you've got your return on investment and then saying, okay, marry up the two and understand that certain specifics, that keyword, that key phrase has given me the best conversion put the money on them as opposed to a generic campaign of PPC where you're spending money willy-nilly. Effective use of social networks. So using the social networks. As I say, it's where PR battles are lost and won. Uh, Ian has given perfect examples there of, uh, of, of where people have made it and, uh, and lost it uh, online. So it's where, it's where you really need to be. A bad decision in, in customer relationship uh, in your relationship management can cause great ripples throughout the web and it's a matter of being there and being able to change that. And then finally, uh, engaging through creative design. Uh, there was something called the, the, the five second rule. Um, that was when you went onto the website and within five seconds, somebody would decide whether they liked the look of your website or not, whether they had their answer to their question by going onto your website. And if they didn't, well, question mark as to the, the whole success there. That's now called the four second rule, frighteningly enough. So even within the last few years, it's getting shorter and shorter. 
And that's because, as I would term it, people are becoming left button happy. They're going on there, their expectations are far greater than they were a few years ago, and it's a matter of rising to that challenge and, and bettering our users' experience of what we offer them online. So the last thing, really, in, in summary, is avoid doing digital if you don't understand the use of the digital space, and that's, that's something that Ian touched on there. Because what it's about is allowing dialogue with your clients, not pushing your brand values onto the client. That's not the way it works. It's about that engagement, and that's the best use of the digital uh, marketing campaign. Thank you very much. Uh, we've obviously got some fantastic experts here um, who will, can answer all your questions. Um, sort of, any if you've got any burning questions about how you actually go out and do something, that would, you know, be ideal. Hello, Tanya Robinson um, from One North East. Um, I'd like to ask Ian a question um, relating to social media and big organisations. I was at something recently and there was a gentleman there from Chrysler and, and he was of the opinion that sometimes when there's negative publicity on social networks, it's actually better for big companies and corporations to back off and let communities and supporters online actually put the situation right for you by coming in and defending your brand. Are there situations where you would feel that that was right, um, the right approach? Or in your opinion, should a company always come back and defend its position? If they say, Chrysler is saying that they've got that as a policy, <clears throat> I'd be quite surprised because both Ford and General Motors, all their brands have got corporate blogs generally with the chief executive writing about their product and developments in, in the business. Uh, so they're already engaging with, with that. If the specific people write, if, my po policy would be in the way we do it, is if you're not part of the conversation, not only can you not control it, you can't move it on. So I would always take the view that if someone is being negative about your, your product, as long as you adopt the right persona, uh, and it's, I suppose it's the way I, I, I differentiate between a website, a corporate website and a corporate blog. A corporate website is all suited and booted and very smart and this is a good organisation. The blog, the corporate blog, is probably a dressed down Friday look where you're more approachable, more reasonable. So even when someone is saying something negative, and we have had it on behalf of clients, we will engage in a conversation to, to uh, if it's inaccurate, address the issues about the inaccuracy. If it's just a question of opinion, at least give our own opinion of why we feel we're wrong. So always engage, because it, it's not about making the, uh, controlling the conversation, it's about making it more interesting. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> My next question is about the uh, Fresh campaign. I'm quite interested in how you're measuring the success of that, other than perhaps with unique visitors to the website. So I'm, I'm thinking there about um, the, the digital element of that campaign. Because uh, obviously at One North East we have passionate people, passionate places, and um, obviously we're looking at lots of new ways to measure the effectiveness of that campaign not just in terms of awareness and attitude, but also its direct impact on the business that it might bring into the region in a roundabout way, in terms of it underpinning all the other areas of agency work. And I think there's some synergy there with campaign to stop people from smoking when you can't actually, obviously you don't own their behavior, if you like, so you can't tell whether they've reacted in the right way. Well, to answer your, your, your question, Tanya, um would be quite an expensive session at Robson Brown's boardroom, so uh, I'll create the invoice now and uh, we could arrange that. <laughs> but basically, Robson Brown, as you know, is, is a number of departments. Fresh uh, has uh, works with a number of our departments and has begun work with uh, digital. So uh, if you look at the current website, not our responsibility. That's something that we're developing and moving forward with. Now, um, how you would measure success in that way? Well, that is a matter then of looking at, one thing is being able to measure the metrics online, being able to work out what happens in that situation where somebody is coming into a website, doing a certain activity, and